I am going to present an example that consists, consists of a firmware update process using a secure bootloader which is based on MCU boot. For the target platform, I'm using an ESP32 dev kit C. Here we are going to work with three firmware images. The first one is the bootloader image. We are going to use the expressive port of MCU boot, which is built on top of the expressive SDK, the ESP IDF. And for the sake of simplicity, we are going to use a pre-built binary of the bootloader image, which is, is this one, the BMCU boot dash ESP32 binary file. So let's create the the, uh, the application firmware images. And he, the first one we are going to use, uh, we are going to create, is the firmware update agent image. So uh, the firmware update agent will rely on the Wi-Fi uh, driver for accessing the network. So let's create this configuration based on the, the WAPI configuration. Okay, so now let's go to menu config. First of all, we need to enable some ESP32 specific configurations for enabling it to be booted from uh, an, an MCU boot bootloader. And these configurations are currently hidden uh, under uh, the experimental features of the build system. So before anything else, we need to select this option, prompt for development and our incomplete code and drivers. Okay, so now that this is enabled, uh, our options are available. So let's go to the application image configuration. Here we need to, to change this, this image format to the MCU boot bootable format. Here this option, the target slot for image flashing, is important. So uh, by selecting the application image primary slot, this means on the MCU boot point of view that this, this image that we are creating right now will be genera generated already in the confirmed state. This means validated, this image is, is already validated. On the other hand, if we selected this uh, to be this image to be flashed to the secondary slot it would require that the application on this on this image to explicitly confirm it as a, a as a stable release a stable update using uh mcu boot apis on runtime otherwise the bootloader uh, on the next boot would revert this image to the latest uh stable release stable stable update so for now let's select this as primary slot it will flash into the primary slot uh, let's take a look in the, on the spi flash configuration after we selected the changed the image format to the mcu boot uh, several options related to over the rp date uh, were enabled here well we will use the default values for everything here but just for showing there are uh, some capabilities for the primary slot, the secondary slot, and also the scratch partition. So e everything, this, these are our requirements for the MCU boot, uh, the MCU boot library. Just use the default values. Here on Wi-Fi configuration, let's disable for now this Wi-Fi persistence of parameters. We don't need it. Uh, okay. The, this WAPI configuration has some uh, debug logs enabled. Let's also disable it. And here on the board selection menu, let's enable the reset interfaces so that we can trigger a reboot using the nutshell. Now let's proceed to the application configuration. Here for the main start of the show, we enable MCU boot library. Since we are creating a firmware update agent, agent application, let's select this, this example for MCU, from MCU boot, MCU boot, the update agent. There is this option here for increasing, we can increase the, the amount of uh, the size of the buffer. So it will be a little more faster. Okay, now we need to enable a web client that will be used by the, by the example. To download the, the the update package let's enable it it will download the update pa update package using uh, via http and last just for us to let's enable a message of the day on the nutshell so that we can s properly see the make sure that we are booting the, the image which image are we are booting so welcome to the welcome to nutx from MCU boot. 
okay okay now let's build it Okay, it's it's finishing. We can see here that since we selected it to be flashed to the primary slot, the build system provided this flag to image tool. This tool is the, the tool that generates the MCU boot bootable format. We can see that it generated it as a confirmed image. Okay, so now let's flash it to, to the ESP32 board. Let's provide the, the, the serial port here. is also required, the paths to the binary files. <laughs> okay, it was flashed. We can see here that the bootloader was flashed to this, to this offset. The, the bootloader offset and the, the application image was flashed to the uh, to the offset of the primary slot. So now let's open the serial port for debugging. Okay, so let's figure reboot here just to see. Okay, here our message of the day. Welcome to Nerix from MSU boot. Okay, so now the first image is already in place. Now let's create the second image. The second image will be a simpler one, just we will use it as the update package. So let's clean our environment. Ah, first of all, yes, just let's let's clean the environment. Since our image is already flashed to the device, we don't need it, the, the binary right now. And this second image, since it's more simpler, we can uh, begin it from the uh, NSH, the basic NSH configuration. Okay, menu config. Once again, we need to enable the experimental features. And also select it as a MCU boot bootable image. Okay, now, uh, we will select since this new image will be used as an update package so we need to uh, create it to be flashed on the secondary slot so it's this image will not be pre-confirmed okay we need to enable the spi flash driver here just take a look at the configurations okay once again we will use the the full values uh, okay, onboard selection, let's enable the reset interfaces. Now let's proceed to the application configurations, bootloader, MCU boot, and let's enable the confirm example. This is a different one. This is confirm example. It's a really basic example application that just calls this MCU boot API for confirming the running image uh, and confirm it as, ex as, a, as a, stable, uh, a stable image. Okay, and similar to the previous one, let's add a, a, a custom message here. So this message here, will, let's say, okay, successful firmware update. So we'll know when we are running which firmware Okay, so now let's compile it. Okay, let's let's rename 
uh, you can we can see here that image two was not provided the confirm flag as expected. And now let's take this Nutix signed image firmware image. That's the output of image two, and let's rename it just for edit to OTA update slash pin. So now let's bring up a web server that from which the our dev kit will download this this update package. So let's create a simple web server using Python here. And bring up this web server on the local port here. Oh, okay, forgot the send it to background. Okay, this is it. So let's just test it. Let's try to download this from my IP. This is OTA update dot bin, which is in this current directory. So let's save it as another name. Okay, just for us to be sure here, let's okay test bin. This is the the file that I've just downloaded, and there's the OTA update, so we can see that they are the same file. Okay, so let's go back to our board here. Okay, just to be sure. Okay, we are running our board using the firmware update agent. So now let's uh, make this board connect to the internet and then download the the update package that we are serving it from my my host PC. Okay, I'm you. Let's connect to the internet here to the network using these commands: wapi. Here I've set up some uh, some custom password for my local network. And also the name, the ESSID of my of my network, test network, very creative. Review. Okay, so technically my board is now connected to the internet. You can see here, I can ping. <laughs> now let's call the MCU boot agent. Uh, application MCU boot agent and let's point it to download the update from my from my local PC here and the, the name of the file we are serving OTA update dot bin okay it will download using the web client It may take a while. It's Okay, almost there. Once it finishes downloading, MCU boot, the, the application already triggers the reset, you can see here. Application image update download successfully and requested an update for the next boot. So now the board was rebooted. MCU boot, the bootloader, Performed the check, the validation of the of this new image, and we can see here that it performed. It also performed. It also performed the swap of the image. So th that image was flashed to the secondary slot, and then when the bootloader, after reset, the bootloader then performs the swap of this image, 
takes the, the image on the second slot, places it on the primary slot after verification, and then executes it. So we can see here that successful firmware update. That was the, the message of the day of our uh, update package image. So we can see that the, the download was okay, and it's executing the the, the the new the new the new image. Okay, but the update is still not complete. So let's say that we did our tests here, and let's say that this image failed the validation tests, and it's deemed bogus. So what can we do? We can just reboot without confirming it. You can see that the, the application for for confirming it it's here, but we won't call it. Let's just reboot it. So we can see here that since the, this image was not reboot and there was a pending update, the, the, this image was still targeted as, uh, tagged as pending. MCU boot bootloader sees it and calls the revert process. So we can see after the revert, welcome to Nerex from MCU boot. This is the message of our previous stable image. So we can see there. this is the update agent image. So this is the rollback procedure. So let's download the image one more time here. I'll just copy and paste all the, the comments. Okay, and let's download it once again. You may be wondering, I, I haven't explained it before, but this image, it's quite big. It is, it, it is exactly one megabyte of, uh, in size. This is because image tool, the tool for, from MCU boot, there's an option for padding uh, the image to the, to the size of the image slot. So this, this was enabled, so that's why the image, it's one megabyte of size. But the actual application, it's way less than that. Okay, once again, now it's finishing the download. The board, the application will trigger the reboot and will boot the, the newly downloaded image after passing the verification. Okay, Verif verification was successful. And we are now, once again, executing the new update, the new application image. So now, but differently, now we, let's confirm it as, as stable. Okay, the application is basically that. Calls the MCU boot API, and and I added this uh, printf message. But what's different now? Let's trigger the reboot. Okay, so now that the image is confirmed, MCU boot bootloader will load this the same image because now the update is complete and successful. Anytime I can reboot it many times, it will always load this, this new stable image. So this is the example for today.